Welcome to Off Duty, I'm Kelsey Hubbard. It's not easy being green, but with Earth Day just days away, we thought we'd give it a try with a focus on food. I caught up with Chef Gina Keatley for some healthy recipes and to learn more about the local food movement. The reason why you'd want to make your own dressing is because you know what's in it, right? We have a little bit of yogurt. We have one teaspoon of honey. We have a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper a little bit of olive oil, and of course blue cheese. This is how easy it is to make blue cheese dressing. So we have like some butter leaves here. Whatever you have, whatever you have available to you, seasonally use. I like the butter, I also love radicchio. I love this, it's very yummy. You know, healthy food can be boring and we do not want that, right? We want it to be exciting and good. And again, one bad thing, blue cheese, one good thing, bunch of lettuces, evens it up. We're negotiating with ourselves. We're gonna be doing a yogurt and tarragon rub on the chicken. Okay. So I'm using yogurt, tarragon, tarragon, red wine vinegar. No. Red wine vinegar. Put a little bit of salt on this puppy. Just a little bit. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of pepper. You can use okay. Juice so why? Again, why am I putting yogurt on this chicken? Because I want just a little bit of fat, so it's not dry. 35 minutes later, you're gonna get this. It's almost Earth Day. We're talking a lot about sustainability, so we want to know what that means in terms of food. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you talk a lot about this in your uh, job at Nourishing NYC and feeding people in need. Um, when people hear the word sustainability, uh, what does that mean in terms of the food that they're eating? Well, you know, I don't think people recognize, you know, where their food comes from. And a lot of times there is a carbon footprint to your meal. And so if you're buying things that are local and seasonal, you're really making a difference every day with every meal you have to the earth. So when people want to buy local, the local food movement, tell, tell us a little bit about what that is and, and how people can go about and incorporate that in their daily lives because a lot of people are just used to running to the corner supermarket. Well, I think the first thing is to recognize what is in season. And, you know, we live in America, so you can get anything anytime, but not only is it lower cost, it's more delicious. Like, when you're looking at taste, you want to get something that's in season because it's flavorful. And it really allows people to connect with the food and be a part of their meal. And can you get that at the supermarket or should they look for farmer's markets and organic food? It's up to people. I mean, I, I don't try to push people on, on do it 100 miles, 200 miles. It's more about just understanding and being aware. Uh, we always encourage people to have maybe mini gardens in their homes. Who has basil? Who's of our basil people here? Come See, on. you could be making fresh basil in your kitchen. And I know as founder of Nourishing NYC, you've uh, campaigned against processed foods, you, you feed local families, and what is it about processed foods that we should know and that we should avoid? Well, you know, you have to be aware that the products you're getting are not, um, they're not saying how many things are necessarily in the boxes. So you might not realize how high the sodium is or the sugar, so just be conscious of what you're buying, what you're purchasing, and that you might think you're saving money and time by having a, uh, a microwavable meal, but at the end of the day, learning how to cook, learning how to um, connect with your food is really, that is, that's worth the extra few minutes. All right, Chef Gina Keatley, hey. thank you so much. Thank you. We can never get enough of food here at Off Duty, so once again, we turn to Gail Monahan. In this week's Cooking Confidential, she shows us how to prepare garlic oil. I don't find you need a really fancy gourmet boutique olive oil for most things. So what you do is, you take any number of garlic cloves, it doesn't really matter. You put them in the food processor, you turn it on. And you process them a little bit, and then you pour in some olive oil. Again, it doesn't really matter how much, which I'll show you why later. All right, you just pour in enough olive oil that you'll have a kind of a paste or a garlicky liquid. So you have now in this Cuisinart, but it could also work in a blender, you have garlic and olive oil, and you just run it until basically the garlic is completely pureed. At that point, you can turn it off. Pour it into a jar, and you can keep it indefinitely in your refrigerator. However, it is important it's refrigerated because on a rare instance, after a certain amount of time, it could become botulistic out of the refrigerator. But in the refrigerator, it's perfectly fine. Um, the reason it doesn't matter how much oil you put in is here, you can put in more to fill up the jar and stir it in, 
it's better actually to have it be very strong because then you can always add more olive oil. So anyway, you take this, you put a lid on it, you put it in your refrigerator and you keep it forever and you can just, it's great. I mean, it's great smeared on bread and made into garlic toast. It's great on salads, it's great on roast vegetables. It's great rubbed on chicken before you roast it. I mean, you'll see once you have it, you'll do, you know, you'll use it endlessly. For all you tech geeks out there, get ready. High def is about to become the new standard def. The National Association of Broadcasters Convention is underway in Las Vegas, and here's a story about some video cameras that's putting Hollywood quality production into the hands of people like you and me. At this year's National Association of Broadcasters Conference in Las Vegas, exhibitors were showing off the latest and greatest in camera tech and putting cinema quality cameras into the hands of even amateur filmmakers. Some of these new cameras shoot in a format called 4K, which is 4,000 lines of vertical resolution. That's more than twice the resolution of the best pictures on an HD television. The Wall Street Journal took a look at three new cameras at NAB, all of which are capable of resolutions higher than HD, without costing more than a new car. First, we'll look at the Sony NEX FS700, available this summer. This looks the most like a professional camera, but it will cost under $10,000 according to Sony. Its sensor is capable of 4K images, packed with 11.6 million pixels. One thing it can do is shoot smooth and cinematic slow motion, as you can see in this demo video. Jody Eldred is a director of photography who's been testing the new camera for Sony. Now, if you're a person who has an aptitude, who has an eye, who has some giftings that, that uh, en enable you to be a good visual storyteller, you can now afford the tools to do that and to do it really, really well. And I see that continuing on and on. It's not just, well, I can make a movie with my iPhone. Yeah, you can. But you can now make a real movie with real cinema cameras with really good lenses. And this is stuff that you could not even do a couple of years ago. Videographers have been using Canon still cameras in video mode for years now due to their big sensors and ability to use high quality traditionally still camera lenses. Now Canon is answering their wishes for a price. Estimated to come in at $15,000, it may still be a bit expensive for an interested hobbyist. But the 1DC, slated for release later this year, can shoot in super high 4K resolution right out of the box. Canon's Chuck Westfall sees this 4K trend as ending up in consumers' living rooms within the next few years. I think people will be watching uh, footage that is uh, higher quality than HD at home uh, within the next three to five years. Um, earlier this year, in January, at the Consumer Electronics Show, about a half a dozen of the leading companies uh, who are manufacturing televisions were showing their prototypes of uh, what they call Quad HD, which is 3840 by 2160 resolution. Our last camera is from Blackmagic, a company that has never before designed cameras. In some ways, this Blackmagic cinema camera, due out this summer, is the star of the show not because of its resolution, but because of its price. At under $3,000, it's actually not much more expensive than some consumer video cameras. But with nearly 2,500 lines of vertical resolution, it captures greater than HD quality images and can accept Canon's DSLR lenses. But for cinematographers like Jody Eldred, the ability to shoot in ever higher resolutions isn't about the tech, it's about the viewing experience. It's about what is the human experience and how close can we get to that with media, whether it's 2D or 3D. You know, having super high resolution in 3D is fantastic because we're trying to emulate what the human eyeballs and the human brain sees, put that in a two-dimensional world but make it feel like three dimensions and the higher quality the technology the higher quality the imagers are for that the more we can make people feel like they're there thanks for watching off duty i'm kelsey hubbard click above to subscribe and catch all of our off duty content on the wsj channel on youtube we'll see you next time